You're tuned in to The Keetra Show and listening to SOB, Style of Business, the podcast with your host, Keetra. We aim to highlight the ongoing trek of entrepreneurs and business owners from around the globe, featuring stories that recount their struggles, experiences, and inevitable road to success and self-fulfillment. Welcome to SOB. This episode is supported by the wonderful creators of Gratitude Plus app, the app that helps you cultivate a daily practice of gratitude. What are you grateful for today? You can download the app now at the App Store or by visiting gratitudeplusapp.com forward slash style of business. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for checking out another wonderful episode of SOB Style of Business, the podcast. This is your host, Keetra. And today I have a great guest by the name of Silas Clark, a.k.a. Brother War, who is on the line with us. He is uh, has some great, 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 wonderful things going on. Um, he's a visual and recording artist based in the Atlanta area, and he's visiting, talking about his his mission, his projects, and um, you know just just some good things overall. Uh, woke gospel is something new to me that he's gonna uh, shed a little bit more light on and just kind of roll into the inspiration behind his entire movement. So. Silas, Brother War, what is going on today? Thank you so much for joining. Please drop us an intro and let's move forward. Yo, what's up? What's up? Uh, peace and blessings, sister. I appreciate you uh, having me on. <clears throat> yes, yeah, um, I'm a very unique individual, and I think all of us are. We're all unique in our own way. Um, but saying all that, you were talking about, so I'll give you a real brief synopsis of my history, a quick bio. Um, I was a extremely introverted young man, a teenager, and I pretty much found my voice through hip hop. I actually had wanted to be an author when I was really small, and then I wanted to be, um, found my voice through rapping, but I was still really shy, and that brought me out of my shell. I kind of was around kind of, you know, like a lot of people, if they're honest with their story, it's not one-dimensional. I kind of waffled between the middle class and the hood, and uh, but the hood is where I felt some type of identity, um, camaraderie, all that stuff, but there was so much negativity and danger there, and I always, deep down, I've always wanted to be a messenger. My heroes since a small child were Martin Luther King and Bob Marley. Um, Bob, even though I rap and I probably sound nothing like Bob Marley, he's probably one of my biggest inspirations musically, which is uh, interesting. But anyway, growing up, I had a, I have a very unusual spiritual journey. So basically, I call my music um, woke gospel because a lot of religion, including, uh, unfortunately, a lot of strong groups, including Christianity, but that's not the only religion that's been used in an oppressive way, um, really about representing my event view and my experience of the gospel, which is really about liberation and freedom. Mm. And um, I am a believer, but I mix and mingle with people of all stripes and belief systems and, you know, um, anybody that's trying to liberate and, and uh, progress the people and help people out. Um, you know, I consider them all eyes. And uh, so that's where the woke gospel, because people be like, man, brother, boy, your music is like, you talk about God and stuff like that, but it's not really, a, it's not traditional kind of gospel. So right. like, they didn't know how to, how to market my music or I didn't really even call it gospel, even though I speak very openly about my faith and how that intersects with activism. But, um, I realized, well, gospel might get some people who, uh, it, it might get people's attention, and it might, and it kind of accurately, it's more accurate depiction or description of what I do. Yeah. So I kind of made up my own subgenre, I guess you could say. <laughs> exactly. Hey, yeah. sometimes you you are create you are a creator, so, so you have to create. You know, you have to create what works. Uh-huh. So let me. Um, let me touch on that a little bit more. I'm gonna, I'm going I'll do a little bit of digging because I want to be able to uh, really get oh, the yeah, message get across. It. Yeah, let's definitely do that uh-huh. because you have an actual mission. Like you know, I know you have your album projects and you also do a lot of activism um, and you do the uh, the different lectures and you also work with youth and things like that. But 
give us give us an insight on the mission behind your lyrics and the words that you're actually you know putting out because like you said it's a little bit of both it's activism and then it's also a little bit of the the word and in, 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 infused in the music that you put out right and we'll see a lot of my activism tied in the scripture so like um you know you can't be so spiritually minded that you know earthly good um, there's power of life and death in the tongue. And I think that everybody, no matter what their belief system, has experienced that. When a certain song comes on, it changes the atmosphere and the tone. Right. I grew up on socially conscious hip-hop and gangster rap. And I kind of sound like a mix between the two. Um, I kind of have a vibe. But I've always often said, uh, being exposed, and I'm originally from the West Coast, um, but... I've been here over 10 years in, in Metro Atlanta, so this is my home. But what I was going to say with that influence, um, the a gangster ain't nothing but an urban warrior who doesn't know what to fight for. And so there's that warrior code in a lot of young men, and they're trying to find identity. And that's where they get lost in this society that exploits people and devalues and dehumanizes individuals. Um, and with the history of oppression. So it's pretty deep, but all of that ties in with the mental and the spiritual warfare that we're over. And yeah. so basically, a lot of my peers, a lot of other hip-hop artists in particular, are speaking death, um, misogyny, uh, self-hate over our communities. And that is, those words have tremendous power. Words have created their containers of power. And even me, I have to, right, yeah. being an intentionally positive person, I have to watch what I say. Words really, and even in the scripture, it says that God spoke it into existence. And it was, and it says that God, we are created in the image of God. And so we have, we are, uh, and this is just how I believe and what I, how I think, but we really got to be more responsible. Um, I understand it's entertainment, but we got to res- all be responsible. Each one of us has to be responsible for our influence. And music is very, very influential, especially hip hop music, uh, especially, you know, the urban subcultures are very influenced and looking. They're searching for all humans, but especially um, they're searching for identity. And then when you go to our youth, they're really searching for identity. And um, so I think it's an identity crisis that we have, but if we keep speaking death um, and uh, rivalry instead of unity and community, um, we're gonna continue to see the fruit of those words. And so I'm trying to, I'm not trying, I'm speaking what I think needs to be said, and I'm not following the trend of what's gonna make me popular or more. Attempting to set a new trend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you you definitely are, and you know it's it's it kind of reminds me of the little uh, the brief discussion we had earlier about you know the the freedom to choose because you know you were talking about responsibility and how music is so influential and you know and it changes the atmosphere and the mood you know and, but at the same time you know. It's like when you are kind of entrenched in a in a culture that for most of your life you've heard gangster rap and hip hop and then you try to turn around and, you know, you might hear a, a track that is, you know, really good. You know, and it's, you know, let's say woke gospel, that choice, you know, making that choice of, OK, I'm used to this, but I'm going to go ahead and listen to that. I think that a lot of people kind of get stuck with being able to make, you know, different choices, you know, because they've done the same thing for so long. Right. Well, I also think that it takes, uh, you know, I struggle with low self-esteem my whole life, and I'm an artist, and I'm an artist, artist, like I said, I'm a visual artist, and a writer, who rap, you know, and so to be really candid, oh, a lot of men struggle with insecurity, but they don't want to be open and talk about it, because a lot of people don't really um, respect that, you know what I'm saying, like, that's not an attractive thing. Right, a yeah. trait or quality to have as a man, but people are attracted to um, <clears throat> confident men. So a lot of men fake it, but so that's the Achilles heel. A lot, of, a lot of these brothers, you know, it happened a long time ago. But when I first really started rapping, really intensely spiritual and positive, 
I did a concert and it was very awkward because I was the only, but the guy who ran the concert liked what I did and he said, I always want to put you in my concerts. And it was the West Coast Peace Tour and it was on the West Coast and it was a long time ago. And, uh, but when I performed my CD skip, I was more, I was let, I was real laid back in my delivery. My beats were slow. My music has kind of changed over the years, so it was even more, uh, stood out even more. more sonically, even. And my CD skips, and it was a very awkward performance. But, you know, I didn't feel well received. You know, like the person before me was throwing money out, you know, girl was dancing and twerking and stuff. And, uh, after I performed, it was very awkward. But afterwards, almost every, uh, like about three or four people from different crews came up to me privately and was like, "You don't what you said was the most real." Like even one of the girls that was twerking, one of the guys that was throwing money in the crowd was like, "Man, what you did?" And the one guy was like, "Man, I, I, I sometimes I feel like I should do what you're doing, but I'm afraid." Oh, wow. Like honestly, I'm afraid because they said it might not be received well and I may never be successful. Because that's kind of the choice that some people feel that they have to make. Is like if I have if I become a messenger, if I say what I really wanna say, then I may end up poor and I may never make it in the industry because I know what the industry wants and I know what the people want. I know people want candy. They yeah. don't want us, you know exactly. they don't want healthy food. You know what I'm saying? They right. want crispy cream and Triple bacon cheeseburgers. They don't want. Yeah. <laughs> they don't That's want a smoothie. They, no carrots. They don't want yeah. a raw vegan <laughs> smoothie. Right. You know what I mean, so, yeah. or, or or even some healthy meat or something. They don't want that. They want the fast food and the entertainment. And so that's the real battle for artists. But for me, it's like. I could have all those things and I would feel like a failure. One of my lines that I say in my song is your your success is failure if you lack significance. Your success is failure if you lack significance. So life is really about significance. There's a lot of people that I've met um, in the community even that are wealthy and they're like, man, I, I, I got all the money and everything that that I thought I wanted and then my life just became meaningless oh, wow. and now I want to figure out how I can give back you know people were made as human beings we think you know everybody got to pay bills I'm not hating on people for wanting to get the money especially if you come out of poverty and stuff like that but we got to realize there's more to life it seems like society is really pushing this consumer um agenda of course and it really yeah. is if you yeah. watch it, it's all about they treat uh, people like consumer or product. And I talk about mm. that in my music, too. And it really is the design. And so what gospel is, is realizing, you know, just like the scripture says, the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's not money right. itself. Yeah. It's the love. It's the unhealthy love where you use things. I'm sorry, we use people and value things instead of using things and valuing people. And we got to bring that value back to fellow human beings and especially the marginalized and oppressed people. And I feel like youth are one of those people where everybody says they love the youth, but they really don't listen to the youth and they really, they kind of play at lip service as far as truly developing youth and helping youth. So. Yeah, yeah, no, it, you you definitely have a point, and you know you mentioned the importance of just really having the intent, not the intention, but you you said something about doing things of significance, right? So to me, that that what went off in my head was like purpose. You know, you you definitely want to do things that are purposeful and have meaning to your life. Like, what is your take on you know purpose versus? Well, I tell you what, what is your take on purpose? going into your purpose, even even when everybody else is doing something different? Because you mentioned that one gentleman that said, hey, you know, I'd love to do that, but, you know, nobody's going to buy my album or I'm, it might be a flop or whatever. But how do you, how do you, what is your take on purpose? Well, this may be too deep for some people, but 
But I really think that a lot of us, and I struggled with identity crisis, you know, and, uh, but I find my identity, I find my value and my purpose and my connection to my creator, to God, to the divine. <clears throat> and so he's my boss. And if he's not pleased, I'm not going to be happy. And so I can please everybody else around me. But if I know deep down I'm not doing what God made me to do, why? Because, like, if, if, if you believe in God and you know that he's the one that made you, then right. he knows what's best for you. He knows, like, trusting God and saying, God, what do you want? Like, I would ask, I would tell everybody, ask God. I know that you're, but we too often just follow the path of least resistance. We right. too right. often follow after what other people want from us. And I said in another song, he's never said it would be easy, but I know it will be worth it trusting in this plan because he's perfect. But there is a great need. There always has been. But there is such a great need for people, human beings, to step outside of their boxes, outside of their comfort zones, and to truly bring healing and um, reconciliation because it's such a divisive time. There's so much division, and we are seeing, you know, I feel like now is a time where in, in our um, history, in this country, especially, but with social media, it's like it's shining a flashlight on everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. If things are being exposed for the good, for the bad, but that's what truth does. Truth just exposes things for what they are, not for what we pretend that they are. And so we have to be able to face up to these consequent, uh, conversations. So I have a lot of controversial conversations, especially on social networking, where there's people who are basically uh, civilly arguing with me and not sometimes not so civilly about what I believe and where I stand, but they have common ground. And so I'm okay with that. Now, if they start insulting and attacking me, I'm like, look, you're out of pocket for that. And I'm not going to tolerate that too much. But, yeah. like, sometimes you, you got to basically... We have to have true strength, not an imitation of strength, to truly be the leaders that we're called to be. You know, and I, I feel like my message is definitely for men and women, but I, ha I feel a strong, because I am a man, I feel a strong calling <clears throat> to, I feel like us as men have kind of not played our position as we... And this is a generalization, of course, because it does not fit the bill for all men. But overall, we've kind of exploited our women. We've kind of neglected our children. We bought into the oppressive narrative of power. We try to use our power to control and exploit our own communities and family. And that is just a mind state that's oppressive that we've been indoctrinated with. And we need to be the warriors to protect our communities. Um, and, and two, men can be nurturing too in a different way, you know. And so I, I really want to change that narrative of what a man is really supposed to be because I think that, you know, um, that's something that has really caused an incredible amount of damage in, in our society, in our cultures, so... Yeah, yeah, That's I know. One of my pastors. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're going to be doing a, a, a great job once you continue with the movement and the things that you're doing, even in your local community. Um, I wanted to ask you, like, how important are movements like yours when it comes to enacting change? Because yours is a, it's a little bit of both. You know, it's, you know, so, you, you include society, but you also include. Uh, Christianity, and I guess even like maybe a little bit of political commentary from what I saw, you know, um, the the different discussions that you have online. But how important are movements like yours when it comes to pushing for this change that we're that we're looking for? Well, I think it's all important. Anything that can have influence, because I'm only one man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm only one human being. But anybody that can inspire other people to get involved and be the change they want to see instead of waiting for someone else to do it. Anybody that can do that, you 
know what I'm saying? I can't. All I can do is play my part, which is to be a voice, to inspire, to challenge thinking, because the 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 real warfare is basically. I said, I, my name is Brother War because I'm fighting for the hearts and the minds of the people. Because if before it ever comes to physical bloodshed, the war has already been won in someone's mind and then in their heart, and that's why they commit murder on their own brother. You know what I'm saying? It's, but it didn't start with the gun. It didn't start with the trigger. It didn't start with the crack. It started in the mind and the heart. So if I can, my my overall mission is to personally um, demonstrate, to demonstrate and display the power and the effectiveness of using my voice, music, media, and video um, to... Uh, deliver this message that inspires other people, but also to champion, encourage others to do the same. Right. You know, so yeah. the the war, really the battle right now is on social is on media, social media, networking. You know, Popeyes chicken sandwiches. People are fighting over them. But that, <laughs> oh wow! That yeah, I saw that. On, you know, yeah. But that was through social media, right? right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have a point. So yeah, yeah so. Why we social media is off, so frequently used to exploit, to advertise, to capitalize, but it's a it's an open tool right now. It's a it's a lens that looks both ways. It can be used however you want to use it. So why are we why are we not engaging that more? You know, my thing is, like, I just encourage everybody, like, look, you like what you like. Sometimes you catch yourself watching a video of a fight or something ratchet, and you're just drawn in, right? Yeah. And I get it. I understand. I've been there. Like, I was like, wow, why did I watch this stupid little thing? It just popped up, and I'm human, too, and I'm susceptible to the same um, distractions that you are. But when I post, I want to be intentional to shift it in the opposite direction. Right, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's important, too. And that's one of the reasons why I asked that last question, because, I, you know, I personally think regardless of whatever your personal beliefs and background is, that, you know, as long as it's a, a positive, you know, change or anything positive that is for all, I think is, is good. So I think that's one of the reasons why you're so successful in what you do. And speaking of that, I want you to I know we got a few more minutes here, but I definitely want to get into a little bit about the album and any new projects that you have coming up. And we have to we, we have to have you back on this one because we gotta there were some other things that we were gonna get to and talk about, but I know we're closing in on time. But um give us a little bit of tell us about the solution, you know, the the project that you have, um, and then any other any other uh, new projects that you have as well. Go ahead and drop those for us, Silas. Okay. Um well my last studio project that I was called the solution um and it's basically the premise if you're not part of the solution then you're part of the problem and the way that i believe is who the real real solution is you know the you know my savior um but anyway i could go off on a diatribe on that but anyway so if you're not part of the solution then you're part of the problem that's the whole concept and so the album, that's pretty much the concept of everything I do. But the album is, that's the theme of the album. And it's available on iTunes, um, Spotify, Pandora, you know, everywhere. It's on YouTube. Um, oh, that's a nice video. But thank you, thank you. And uh, But the important thing, if y'all want to find me on social networking, my handle, my name is spelled with a U and an A. Cause it's all about you, and I live in the A, so that might help you remember oh, how to spell yeah. it. Because you know, when you type something, <laughs> that's when you true. Type something in. If you spell brother war, you won't find me. So it's B R U T H A war W A R. And if you type that into YouTube, um, Instagram, and I'm really trying to, not trying to. I'm really growing my YouTube, so I really want to galvanize my effort there um i am on soundcloud and other stuff like that but i think spotify youtube instagram is probably the best way and i just started a tiktok so i don't have hardly any followers or anything but because i work with little kids so they're on tiktok and i realized that i need to target 
get to pay their tax too. Exactly. With the messages. So I'm also on TikTok now. So I'm on Twitter, but I'm not real active on there. But my main platform is YouTube. And, I, and I'm going to create a lot more content for YouTube. So anyway, saying all that, I'm kind of slowly working on my next studio album. But in the meanwhile, I'm always going to drop a uh, mixtape song. So I don't really drop a mixtape all at once. To keep people engaged, I drop a lot of little songs, like snippet songs, um, mixtape songs, using beats I download off YouTube just to keep it spicy keep it interesting right yeah um yeah you can anybody that's listening to me they can hear okay this guy's kind of deep or whatever but if you listen to my music i like to explain it uh ratchet beats with righteous rhymes so my music sounds pretty yeah i don't know street I thought it was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, I'm, no, you know what? People don't always know it's positive. Exactly. I was just about to say it. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Because that's what I want to do. I want to, everybody needs that. You know, everybody needs positivity. But if I come sounding all square to people, they might not receive it. But the music is a, a great way to open people up and say, oh, wow, okay. I try to spit it in a way that's very direct, like how I talk but more relatable to people that may not be on this page yet. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and I've seen that be effective, especially with the youth in the streets. A lot of them might not even listen to this interview, <laughs> I mean, unless they knew who I was. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what, we truly appreciate the information you've shared with us. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss um, getting you back a little bit later to, to get into a little bit more of the, the conversations that we had in, in, in terms of purpose and really just kind of walking by faith and, you know, doing what we feel to do in our hearts, but we're intimidated about by the things that are going on around us. So, um, Silas, the last thing, and then we will sign off. What is the impact you want to have on others? Um, definitely want to address that. The last thing I want to say is anybody, I can send you some free uh, mixtape tracks or if you have any questions you want to ask me directly or book me, you can just email me at brotherwar, B-R-U-T-H-A-W-A-R, at gmail.com. You can email me uh, or uh, to book me or to ask a question or to request some free mixtape music. Um, and then also, please make sure you follow me on YouTube. If you don't follow me anywhere else, follow me on YouTube. And that's my actual channel. Uh, B-R-U-T-H-A-W-A-R because I have some other content on there but try to follow my actual channel so I had to just throw that out there Um, so you're saying what is the impact I want to make yeah the impact and that you want to have on others or just anything that you want to share before we wrap up what I want to share is I want to encourage everybody to stop being so controlled by the false narratives that we're seeing on the media, whether it's through religion, whether it's through politics, whether it's through other people's expectations or society's portrayal of you, and truly seek a deeper understanding of truth, of why you're really here, who you really are, and seek a deeper understanding. Because I think a lot of us keep it way too we basically just accept what has been passed to us whether it's through religion whether it's through politics whether it's through culture or family culture and we don't dig a little deeper and we wonder why we're so unhappy and so lost and so i just want to encourage everybody because each person has a deeper part to you each person has a divine connection deep inside of you and i just encourage everybody to tap into that and to seek that out uh, seek and you will find so I just encourage y'all to seek a greater understanding you don't have to make it happen but just stay open and keep seeking and stop being um, so easy, man, easily manipulated by these false narratives because well, you know deep down that something ain't right and so connect to that deeper understanding seek out that deeper understanding and you will find it Love it, love it, love it, love it. Thanks so much, Brother Ward. We appreciate you joining us today on the podcast and definitely looking forward to having you back. 
All right. Thank you so much, sister. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks for hanging out with us here on SOB. We hope this episode has been resourceful. If you'd like to check out the latest articles or follow Keetra's website updates, just log on to Keetra.com or follow her on Twitter at K-E-E-T-R-I-A.